somewhat essential when it comes to filmmaking or anything. So this is the 65D because we're going to be shooting RAWs. But this is the way I have done it today. The model looks pretty f***ed off. It's bloody impressive. Okay, so in this video we're going to discover which Fujifilm lens is best for portraiture. Now today we are going to be doing a self-portraiture. So I will be your model. <laughs> Reluctantly, of course. But recently I have had a lot of inquiries regarding headshots from actors to corporate work. Headshots for like LinkedIn, their website, auditions, YouTube, I've had it all. And I've had a bit of time to play with the setup. But one of the first things we need to look at before we even start touching gear and cameras and lenses and all of that stuff, we do need to look at our light source. Now at the moment, I am using a natural light source. I'm using a window which is diffused with tracing paper. Yeah, look, now you don't need to be fancy, but, but that will do. And it's what I use for most of my YouTube videos. However, it is not a consistent light source. I can only shoot here in the mornings and you can find that when the clouds pass or if there's a little bit of light that's blocked, it becomes very dark in here, as you can see here. So it's not a reliable source of light. But in today's video, we're gonna use a proper light source. And that is with the help of the Zion G300 Molus. This thing is powerful. This thing has a kick. As you can see here, this is at 100% of its energy. It's bloody impressive. I know the very basics about lying, but all I know is you need a strong source. I'm not gonna need it all the way up to 100%, but it's nice to have if there is any other upcoming projects where I might need some kind of source of that magnitude. Both the light and the kind of controller that it comes with are both fanned, so it's not going to overheat. And it's quite lightweight considering its power. Some light equipment that I've worked with before is pretty heavy, so this is pretty portable, especially for things like YouTube. Anyway, if you're interested in this light, I've linked it in the description below, but this is going to be our source because we cannot rely on just a window for this. Look at that light source, that's beautiful, isn't it? That's only at 20%. Okay, so that's at 5% and I've had to adjust the ND filter. But as you can tell, we definitely need to get some diffusion on there. It's actually hurting my eyes now. What kind of diffusion do we need? So we have two choices. Kindly, Zion have sent me this. I'm not being paid, but I'm very grateful. So the first one is a parabolic softbox. This is the 60D. And as you can tell, you've probably seen this in YouTube videos before, but somewhat essential when it comes to filmmaking or anything. And the second one is a lantern softbox. This is the 65D. We're gonna test both of these softboxes to see which one will prevail for this shoot. And we're gonna test it through video because it's just easier that way. And then we'll take some shots and start talking about lenses and camera. We will get there, I promise, stick with me. Let's first try the parabolic softbox, the 60D. There we go, and that's not too bad. I like the evenness of it. And like I said, there's a nice bit of contrast on my face. Yeah, it's good. So I've got the control here, um, the fan is spinning but we, it's good that I can just adjust this myself. And we're at 4,500 Kelvin, which I think is a nice light. I can see my skin tone looks good and uh, I'm pretty happy. Okay, now let's switch to the Lantern Softbox, the 65D. Now already a much more evenly toned light. What's good about the Lantern light is it's bouncing off these white walls that I have around me. Okay, I'm using a, back, a gray background, but the light around me is all white and I'm getting a nice evenly spread. All we need to do really is turn this one down. We're using obviously less energy and straight away, I think we can both say that this is probably the one that I'm gonna choose. We'll just warm up a smidge, let's say 4100 Kelvin. That's really nice. I love the way that's looking. A nice even spread on all of my skin, face, body. So I don't need to light too much. It's a, definitely a much better way to go when lighting for portraiture. So in this video, I'm just gonna be suggesting prime lenses. The quality is better and it's just much easier to talk about individual focal lengths. Now I have brought with me for fun an 18 mil. This is quite wide. We really wouldn't probably use this for portraiture. We'd use this more for landscape. For fun, we're gonna slap this on, take a few shots and see you know, how 
how it performs. But one lens we're definitely gonna be trying out is the 33 f 1.4. A stunning lens, a little pricey, equivalent to 50 mil. And 50 mil, if you're unsure, of why that's important is because it's what the eye sees. It's how we see the world. So it, this is kind of spot on, especially 33. We do have a somewhat similar, more budget friendly portrait lens, which is the 35 F2. We're going to test this out, see if it's any good and get your views on it. See what if this is good enough, you know, maybe for portraiture. We've also got the Filtrox 56 mil F 1.7. I got this recently and I'm really interested to test it out for portraiture. I'm in quite a tight room, but I do think that this could handle portraits really well. So let's see, you know, we're only doing headshots today, something for like a profile picture. So we'll give this a whirl. We're gonna test out four lenses. We're gonna see how they reform. Then I'm gonna hand it over to you. You're gonna tell me what you think is right and what you think is wrong. From this angle, I'm going to show you the process of how I'm going to do this and give you a few little tips that I've learned along the way. Now, one of the first tips that I've learned is to aim your camera slightly up towards your subject. So for example, I know we're not using this Sigma that I've got in here that I use that all for video, which you could use for the portraiture, but it's a zoom lens. We're trying to keep it to primes. You kind of may want to make sure that the subject is just slightly facing down on the camera. Now I'm told that this gives the subject, the, the, the model a little bit more, gives the picture a bit more strength. So for fun, well, let's try out this 18 mil. I know this isn't a lens that we would use, but it's so good, this lens. I really want to just show you why we don't use it as well. Another tip I've been told is don't shoot vertically, crop it appropriately. We're only doing headshots. Do you know what I mean? Now, another really important tip is you don't need to be shooting wide open. If you shoot too wide open, you run the risk of having things out of focus. It might just focus on your nose or your eye. You want to get obviously the whole face. Because if you've lit it well, shoot between 5.6 and 8. So also you want to have your white balance kind of neutral. You don't want to have any recipes dialed in, which something I just found on mine is I'm just changing the white balance. You want it to be uh, somewhat central. So you, when you get grab your raw files, they aren't, you know, very warm or very cold. It's kind of good to have all of your settings somewhat neutral somewhat at zero. You can play with this all in post because we're going to be shooting raws. Okay, like I said, this is the 18 mil. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so we've got a 10 second timer on here and then I'm going to just run over and and keep my position. One thing that I do like to do is, and I will bring you guys over here so you can see me, is I like to slightly angle my body like a 45 degree angle or towards the light and then turn my head. We're going for a very simple kind of like a headshot. We're not going for anything too spectacular. I'm just trying to help you. If you get a gig like this, that um, you know what to do. This is something I had to go through not so long ago and I just needed to know, okay, what is the best setup for me to get, you know, the best outcome for my client. Okay, head that way. Cool. So I took about four shots then. I wanted to, just in case I blinked or anything, it's good to get your number, especially doing self-portraiture. I don't think it's too necessary if you're shooting someone else. You can take your time about this. Just get them nice and relaxed. That is the point of it. So I'm just going to take it again because I think um, the tripod actually does need to come up a bit more. It's a little bit too low. It's very hard sometimes to uh, get this all set up on your own. So let me just adjust it and we'll try again. Now the great thing about this light source, I have full control. So it does look a little bit bright for me. I'm gonna turn it down even more. I'm only at 10% on here. So it doesn't seem necessary to kind of use too much energy to kind of, you know, for just getting a shot. Uh, I still think this probably needs to come up. Okay, so we've got a nice even spread. I'm shooting at 5.6. My shutter speed is at 100. Um, we can have it. Uh, that low because of the light. Um, I need a haircut, obviously. <laughs> I am not the best model and I might even take off my glasses because if I was gonna have a LinkedIn shot, that's kind of, you know, what I'd wanna do. So like I said, it is also advised to stand up. 
um, I'm not doing that today. I kind of need to raise that and that's just a whole other ordeal and because everything's on here. So I would suggest standing up. However, it can be done. Just make sure you, you or your client is set up well, 45 degrees and you kind of want to turn it slightly um, towards the camera. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, 80 mil, here we go. I better put this down. So let's move on to a lens that I know that I'm probably gonna suggest that you do use, um, if you can afford it. If not, we'll move on to another lens, but this is the 33 mil F 1.4. One of the sharpest, best Fujifilm lenses that I've owned and you know, here is why. Okay, that already looks so much better, but what we already I've noticed is I'm gonna have to zoom out. Okay, without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so, so I'm gonna put this down. Great, I'm happy with that. We'll just do a few more, just in case. They're just gonna do a nice, more relaxed one where I'm crossed over. Again, nice contrast on the face. The whole thing just looks a lot, lot better. And uh, overall, hopefully, this is the one. Now I'm sure that this is fine. This looks perfect. This is exactly what you need for headshots and and probably what I'm gonna recommend. However, let's look at the F2, the 35 mil. Just see how it compares. See if it's, you know, usable i'm sure it is again all these lenses that i've got are fantastic but there's one that just clearly stands out and probably is the 33 mil oh that's in to hit the timer so we're going to take these shots ready 35 mils pretty much the same f2 f.6 great as you can see my back wasn't straight so make sure that your back you've got good posture maybe lean forward a bit calm down maybe kind of I feel like you're like leaning back a bit. To be honest, I think that did just as good a job. I love this lens and it's slightly more affordable. I say slightly, I think it's much more affordable. So if you're looking for a portraiture lens that you don't want to spend loads of money on, this, I mean, this is my favorite Fuji lens anyway. So I would, if you're thinking about it, I'd get it anyway. Okay, moving swiftly on. This is a great budget lens. Let's look at the Viltrox 56 mil because this is a portraiture lens. A lot of people will use this lens because of the compression you get with a slightly more telephoto lens. This is classed as a short telephoto lens. And like I said, something that would be probably used more than what I'm using, but I like the 33 and the 35 because they are equivalent to a 50 mil and a 50 mil is again like I said what the eye sees and that it's preference this is all preference so you choose um, there's no rules to this everyone thinks that there's one way but these are just guidelines okay so we have our 56 mil on I have moved the camera back considerably it's right against the wall now this might not be what I choose for inside this studio I guess what I'm trying to say is you do need to consider the environment you're in it's very likely I would use this lens if I was outside and had a bit more room because of the compression you can get with a telephoto lens but um, let's see for this for this kind of setup. I want to see how this lens performs, and at the end we'll go through all of them. Um, stay with me, and we'll just go through all of the portraits that I've taken, and you know you can choose um, and let me know in the comments. Who knows? You might choose that 18 mil. The annoying thing about this is I have to come all the way over to hit the button to then you know come back to take the photo. So that would be one reason why I wouldn't choose this lens. Hey, run, run, run. Okay. Great. Okay. I'm going to do one more test and then I think, I think that's it. Okay. That time I shot at F.2. So maybe this time I'll try and shoot at F 5.6 f 5.6 is much more preferable it's going to get everything in right okay great look we've got that in the bank let's head back to my studio at home 
and go through all of those photos and just decide what, what's worth it. Like I said, there are loads of ways of doing this, but this is the way I have done it today. Right, back home. Okay, so it's the next day. I've uploaded all my raw files to my computer and now we're gonna have a look through and you know, see what we think. Okay, so here is our first one. As you can see, the camera is far too low. It's already kind of like, ugh. I mean, don't worry about composition here. So what we can just tidy all this up now first and for, first and foremost. The model looks pretty pissed off. So we've not put him at ease. It's probably the first photo of the day. And yeah, I wasn't, I don't really enjoy this. I don't know who does enjoy this, but um, yeah, look, there's our first photo. It's, uh, it's not great, but hey, hey, it will do. Um, we need to bring the exposure down just a tad, but yeah, look, that's why, this is why we do not shoot with the 18 mil. The 18 mil is a fantastic lens. You can see the sharpness, you can see how well it can perform in some photos, but for this scenario, I just, I just wouldn't do it. Not the time and place for it. Um, here's the second one. I look like some sort of villain. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's crop it a bit, a little bit more. Again, there's going to be more, you're going to have to do a hell of a lot more cropping with this. Um, actually what you want to be doing, actually, if you are going to crop, you want to, you want to be obviously, you know, cropping vertically as if you're, you know, making it for, so that's not too bad. It's just nothing that, nothing where I would, you know, uh, be I wouldn't be too happy with this if I had um, gone to a photographer, had my photo shoot, and I got this. I'd be a bit kind of I don't know, a, little, a little upset. What happens with wide angle is your face becomes very narrow. All of your body becomes very narrow. As you see, as we go along, you'll just you'll notice. As you'll see, like it, my face will just become wider and wider as we go through the focal lengths. So let's just let's do a little bit of correction. My backdrop is a little creased, so I'm just going to iron them out. Perfect. Okay, so look, that's the kind of, that's the 18 mil, something I wouldn't advise and something probably, you know, we shouldn't spend too much time on. Anyway, that's the 18 mil. Let's head to the 33 mil straight away. This is what the eye sees. This is already much more to my liking and something you know i'm much more happier with this one i lent forward i feel much more relaxed with this one can you see the detail i mean what i really like about this one is that i'm just much i can just feel that i'm much more at ease there's a feeling with this photo that um i don't, i can enjoy looking at rather than some of the other ones because the other ones are slightly unsightly for me anyway i am going to do some very small tweaks and i'm happy with that i'm not going to do too much this is a basic color grade just so you can see what's coming out of the camera so that was the 33 this is now the 35 now i don't love this photo but this is 35 as well don't love this photo either um but I look a bit too upright, like something stuck up my ass. Anyway, let's work with this one. Again, I'm just gonna actually, I might just copy the sentence from the one I like and then paste it over. Yeah, fine, perfect. Again, 33 or 35 on an APS-C sensor is gonna get to you to about 50 mil and 15 mil is what the eye sees. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't recommend this maybe for portraiture, because a portrait lens is usually a telephoto lens, particularly maybe like a short telephoto lens, but it's kind of what I prefer to see. And if I was going to use this as a profile picture, all I'd have to do was tighten it up, um, give it that vertical look and bing, bang, boom, we're there. I'm really happy with that. It's actually quite nice. This though is the Viltrox 56 mil f 1.7. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit more compression around my face and it is wider. Um, I'm going to see if I, I'm going to crop this and I'm going to show you just something very quick. Um, I'm also going to paste those same settings and I'm going to make it longer as well. So we can maybe somehow tee up 
the two photos so they kind of look similar anyway so you got this one here but you can see i don't know if you can see this but you can see let's maybe take that one and then that one you can see my head is just a little bit wider and you're getting again a little bit of softness around the sides here i don't know maybe i took this with um the 1.7 so that might be why it's soft and that was a good example for why i mean it looks nice you can see the softness on my shoulder here but what i prefer is it all yeah that's the one i must have changed this to f 5.6 because now look my shoulders now in focus and um it depends what style you're going for i would like everything in focus look and you can see around my head now but you can see like i said my face is a little wider my nose a little wider and um everything is slightly more compressed um let's just tighten this up i'm looking a little bit too straight on for my liking this one's slightly probably one of the best ones if i was going to use for like a profile photo or anything like that you know it's a it's a nice enough photo it's not too forced i think something like this can feel a bit too forced you don't want to over smile in your profile pictures and you don't want to be too upright either it's getting it's all about getting a nice relaxed look in your photos like i said that one's too, too faced on but it's not bad for about you know we did about nine pictures there so for fun i was saying don't use the 18 mil it's just gonna look awkward i think they, those photos do look pretty bizarre um you want to go 33 and above um and if we're talking about full frame, I'm talking like 50 mil and above, um, you're just going to get better photos. And yeah, they're going to perform just better. And I think with this photo, I think that one probably might be, you know, the one I would use. So although my preference is the 33, I do think this is the better photo. And sometimes you just got to go for the better photo. Anyway, look, I hope that has helped. I hope I've given you some insight into what Fujifilm lenses that are you know appropriate for you, your use don't get me wrong i've used prime lenses today but you can definitely use a zoom lens it's just that prime lenses do offer a quality that sometimes the the, the zoom lenses don't anyway let me know your thoughts on this video what would you use what is your go-to have you been asked to do client work recently like me um and what's your process uh, is it similar to mine or is it completely different let me know in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Ciao for now.